Okay, Psalms chapter 2 is about the second coming and the kingdom of Jesus Christ. So I don't read the I don't read the Old Testament. You're missing Jesus. Why do the heathen Gentiles rage? And the people imagine a vain thing. Now this is at the end of the tribulation period. This is this is after the Antichrist, this is when Jesus Christ is coming, and they're in rage. Well, the Bible says in the book of Revelation that there's these big hailstones and they're angry with God. <clears throat> there's this judgment of God happening, and they're putting their fist up to God. They're not repenting. They're getting angrier with God. The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord God Jehovah and against his anointed. Now anointed. Anointed is Christ and Christ is anointed. So when you say Jesus Christ, you're saying God Jehovah saves and anointed. Jesus Christ is the anointed one. And here's a verse against the Jehovah Witnesses because God and Jesus are the same. They're angry with God and they're angry against Jesus, the anointed one of God. Saying, let us, the people, break their the trinity, bands asunder, and cast away their cords or ropes from us. We're not obligated, we're not going to be obligated to God and Jesus anymore. We're not going by his Bible, we're not going by his rules, we're not going to listen to his church, we're not going to listen to his preaching, we're not going to listen to his word. We're not being held. And the Bible says the word of God is not bound. But the unsaved man thinks it is. They think, oh, the Christian lives such a terrible life. He has to, he has to, he must, he must. No. Many Christians do it because they want to do it and they love the Lord for doing it. He, God, that sitteth in the heavens, plural, shall laugh. And I can imagine what that holy and righteous life. If there's, there's, Things in heaven I like to hear. I like to hear God's voice. The voice that spoke in the ears of uh, Moses, in the ears of Joseph, and to David. I also like to hear the voice of the, the cherubims. Holy, holy, holy. Well, how about this? How about God sitting in heaven looking at a lost man who is, who is rejecting him? How about just hearing God laughing at him? Can you imagine that the great white throne judgment when God finally declares, Jesus declares, depart from me, you workers of iniquity, I never knew you. And then uh, words of man, God's going, ha, 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 I don't know how he's going to do it. I don't know how God's going to have a holy, righteous, wrathful anger. Because John the Baptist says, if you have not the Son, you have the great white throne judgment, you shall not see light, but the wrath of God. And now here's God laughing at you. You've disobeyed him. You've got the wrath of God. And that holy God laughing at you. And, and they're like, how dare you? Yeah. Well, you despised. And in the tribulation period, as we come into the second advent, how about when men, God is putting the plague, and one of them is the hailstone, and they're just cursing. And, and in other places, God puts upon the beast and his seat. I forget what it is. Boils or something like that. And they're just cursing God. Oh, God, I hate you, God. And just imagine God up in heaven during tribulation. <laughs> really? You're angry with me? What's that going to do? Imagine you being so angry. What, 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 is that going to ruin God's millennium, day, hour? That you, a pitiful creature that won't obey him who's holy right? You, huh. <coughs> Some people get annoyed when you laugh at them. Sometimes that's one of the responses I have. Maybe sarcasm. You know, they come in my face and they say something stupid. <laughs> and then they look at you like, how dare you? It's something God's going to do. And when you've been in a public ministry and you hear what people have to say, it's like, <coughs> where'd you get that? That's nothing new. You know, the devil, the devil rules. <laughs> I've heard that before. I've read the book. He may rule now, but he goes down. You imagine God laughing. And it's not a joke. 
And yet to God, it's it's a lie. The Lord shall have them in derision. Now say, Stiley, you're a bunch of bull. This is not tribulation period. This is the Psalm. This is Old Testament. It's boring. Uh, let's take our Second Thessalonians chapter 2. Let's take it to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. And let's see what it is. And verse 3. I think we'll read the whole thing. 2 Thessalonians 2, 3. Let no man deceive you by any means. That's a warning. For that day shall not come, except they're coming and falling away first. That the man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. There is the tribulation period. The, re the, the second advent is not going to happen until the Antichrist shows up and does his seven years work. Who opposes and exalted himself above all that is called God. Or that is worship. He's going to be the God of all gods. But not God, but all God. So that he as God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. That's three and a half years. That's the desolation and abomination that Jesus spoke of, that Jesus said that Daniel spoke of. Remember ye not, that when I was yet with you, I told you these things. Now ye know that, now ye know what withheldeth, that he might be revealed in his time, the devil, the Antichrist. For the mystery of iniquity, already work only he who letteth will let him let until he be taken out of the way kind of hard reading and then shall the wicked capital w there he is be revealed here he is whom the lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth <laughs> and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming there's the second advent comes as a light when the earth has no moon, no star, and no st no stars light, and there's no artificial light. Even him, the Antichrist, whose coming is after the works of Satan, the Antichrist, with all power and signs, oh, there's a charismatic, and lying wonders, there's a charismatic, and with all deceivableness, that's a mouthful of a word, of unrighteousness, in them that perish, who do not believe on God, who have not believed God, who have rejected God, they get perish, because they received not the love of the truth, for God so loved the world, and he loved, and he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, look at, look at verse 10 with John 3, 16, they rejected John 3, 16, now watch this, here's our context, and for this cause, God shall show them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. John 8, 44 says that's the devil. That they all might be damned who believe not the truth. God, Jesus, Jesus said, I am the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Go back to Psalms. He that sits in heaven shall laugh. And the Lord shall have them in them in delusion. Tribulation period. That's who you want? You don't want me? There you go. Take them. And it, oh, you're going to cuss me out? You're going to curse me out? You're going to hate me because the plagues I put? The, the, the veils, the trumpets, and the seals, and the three woes? <laughs> That's the guy you want. That's the political figure you want. That's your answer right there. You want to believe in lies? You don't want the truth? You don't want the gospel tracts? You don't want the preacher? You don't want the Bible, which is true? Sanctifying through thy word, thy word is truth? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth. You don't want that? You got what you want. You got the liar. You got the deceiver. You got the charismatic. You got the false sign. <laughs> you got what you wanted. Now walk in him. Then shall he, God, speak unto them in his wrath. Now there's the second advent. And vex in his sore displeasure. That's Jesus coming back. Not as a baby, as a lion. And fierceness with his bride, the church, behind him. And you pick that up in Joel chapter 3. Yet I have set my king upon my holy hill, Zion. Boom. Jesus Christ has come. 
picked up the Jews, probably in Sarah Petra, followed the King's Highway, followed the route of Joshua, crossed the Jordan River, and now is seated in Jerusalem on the throne of David. What has happened? He's divided the sheep from the goats, and he's cast the goats off into the hell. The sheep, Israelites, and those who have helped the Israelites and taken care of the Israelites, we're in the millennium, and what's going on in the millennium? There's Jesus in the holy hill, Zion, which is Jerusalem, seated on David's throne with the temple that God's going to build for Jesus. I will declare the decree. The Lord has said it unto me. That's God speaking unto himself. That's God speaking to Jesus. Thou art my son. I wonder who that could be, capital S. This day have I begotten thee. Gee, I wonder who that could be. That's Jesus. I don't see Jesus in the Old Testament. There he is. This uh, One time, the disciples were there. Jesus is there. And his voice came from the cloud. This is my beloved son, who I am well pleased. Another place he said, this is my begotten son. God speaking to Jesus, ask of me. And I shall give thee the heathen for thy inheritance. All right, Jesus comes back for the nation of Israel, for the raiment of Israel. God is not finished with, with Israel. And there are some Gentiles who are not Jews. And Jesus says, you, you taken care of me. You fed me. You visited me in prison. You took care of my wounds. You were there for me. And they're like, no, I don't remember. Father, let me take them in. Let me give them a reward. They're yours. So you have in the millennium, not only do you have the church where there are Jews and Gentiles, in the millennium you got Jews and Gentiles that come out of the tribulation. Not all Gentiles are damned at the end of the seven years. Some go in. But pretty much most will not. And the outer parts of the earth for thy possession. Now what's that outer part? Jesus Christ gets it all. The devil said, hey, See all this? I'll give it to you in the time of a moment of time. If you fall down and worship me, and Jesus is like, you keep it. Because at such and such date, at such and such time, at such and such hour, at such and such year, which we don't know, it's mine. And by the way, you'll be locked up for a thousand years when I take it. Just, you know? And he quotes scripture to the devil. The devil may rule, but he don't rule for a long time. Not during this time we're reading. At this moment, Jesus sitting on a holy hill of Zion, the devil's bound up for a thousand years. Thou shalt break them with a rod of iron. Ouch. That's that little baby. He's going to reign with a rod of iron. No, you know, you think taxation and the Democrats and the Republicans are bad? You wait till Jesus Christ takes that throne. When you've got ambassadors, the <coughs> you got his supreme court, the 12 apostles of the Lamb around him. And then you've got in each land, Christians who have done right, who have served the Lord and get a right to the millennial inheritance. We who get that inheritance, I don't know me, hopefully I will, we get in charge of cities. Some get 10 cities, some get 5 cities, some... Get two cities, I think it is. So what happens is, all right, I'm in a city. Now, there's still sin going on, but there's no curse. So what happens if, if I get a rule of a city, I hope I do, and I see something going on that shouldn't be going on. Come on, guy. Take you to the apostles. I don't know. I didn't say Peter. He's well liked. Peter, I got this man. He was in my city. He committed this crime. And and Moses was in charge. Moses had men put forth as, as, the, as the judges of the nation. And the case was too hard. It was brought before God. Peter said, okay, he'll hear the case. And you march off before Jesus. And if you sin, you've done wrong, you done wrong boom, right? go jump in the lake of fire. And that lake of fire is going to be right there in the millennium. And a couple of angels probably grab you and just throw you right in. Won't be tolerated. Listen, you don't think there's going to be sin when the millennium's over and the devil's free. He's going to find an army to go against God and Jesus.
Thou shalt dash them to pieces like a potter's vessel. That's also second advent, and those that are do wrong in the millennium. You are an enemy of God. You go against God in the tribulation period, and you stay with the Antichrist and all that. You're not a friend of God. You're not going to survive no matter what kind of computer system you come up, no matter how you can beat the beast. You're an enemy against God. And the only way it looks like you can be as a Gentile and be saved in, in the, in the tribul tribulation period, excuse me, is you got to help that Jew. Anybody who's a KKK goes in the tribulation period, they're not going to come out because KKK is against the Jews. Anybody who's with the NAACP goes in the tribulation period, they're not going to come out right because they're against the Jew because the colored person is the man of all men. If you go into the tribulation with the Catholic, Catholics say, that's our land. What are you guys doing in there? And the Catholics have murdered and killed Jews in history. And there are churches out there, God's all finished with the Jew, and, and uh, we're the great church. Listen, that was that went on in Massachusetts. Massachusetts was uh, the new, the new zeal or something, I think it was called. What was that? What was that Puritan establishment in Massachusetts? God's all done with the Jews, and he's looking at us in this brand new land. Look how well, that's why they killed the Indians, because it's our land. In the name of God, we come. Like, Israel came in the land and killed everybody. You're stealing from the Jews. Be wise now, therefore, O kings. And here's a warning to kings. Be instructed, ye judges of the earth. It's instruction to people. This is what we go out and preach, the gospel of Jesus Christ. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. And when the Lord comes, calls his church out the rapture, you'll go up and you don't have to worry about the tribulation. I don't need to worry about the tribulation. I ain't going to be there. We'll be wise today to preach the gospel. Nothing else. Anything else but the gospel is unwise. Serve the Lord with fear. And throughout the Bible, the fear of the Lord is the wisdom. The fear of the Lord is the understanding. The fear of the Lord is good and healthy. And rejoice with trembling. Paul says rejoice evermore. Kiss the son. Judas did that, but he did it wrongly. This is the second advent. The first advent, they kissed the son, and they took him and arrested him and crucified him. When you come to kiss that son, you ain't going to crucify him, nothing. I wouldn't want to lay a hand on Jesus. I wouldn't want to know what happened if you were to lay a hand on Jesus. And I don't know if anybody will try to do that. <laughs> Maybe somebody gets so angry when Jesus comes. I'm coming to take you know, Kiss the son, least he be angry. Don't give him a Judas kiss. And he's already angry. But when he's also sitting in Jerusalem, the proper thing is, and, and the church age doesn't go for that, Paul says, give everyone a holy kiss. You walk up to Jesus, you kiss his foot or you kiss his hand. That's what Mary did when, when Jesus is in the house of Simon. He says, Simon, this woman has not stopped kissing my feet. The king, the king of the Jews, and she's kissing his feet. He says, Simon, you can give me a kiss. Oh. Scripture with scripture. And ye perish from the way. So if you don't give reverence to the Son in the second advent and in the millennium, you perish. And listen, in the millennium, I mean in the tribulation in the in the millennium, it's not believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, thou shalt be saved. There he is. There's one place I think Zachariah said, you know, you're to bring your child to God to be punished. If you, you know, if he preaches. You know, this is the Lord. No, you don't need that preaching. There he is. When his wrath is kindled but a little, that would be the second advent. Second advent is really a very little time. All right, everyone mount up on the horse. Let's go. Or mount up on the acid, whatever it is. Let's go home. Let's go on our honeymoon. Let's go save the Jew. Blessed are they, and blessed are, blessed are all they 
that put their trust in him. You put your trust in Jesus, you put your trust in God, you put your trust in Jehovah, you're safe. Because it's nothing but God, Jehovah, Jesus. Listen, those men in the tribulation period are putting their trust in money. They're putting their trust in the mark. They're putting their trust in the Antichrist. They're putting their trust in the beast. And they're putting their trust in the devil. Those Jews, when they leave and find out that that guy is in the holy of holy place, that's not the one we're supposed to be at. And they run to the place prepared for them. If it's so peach, wherever it is, that, those people are going to be trusting in Jehovah and his Messiah. And at that point, they'll receive Jesus as their Messiah. There he is. That's the one. Okay, you guys, trust me. Let's go. Mount up. It's like uh, Rahab. Hey, we've heard a great report of your God. We heard what God's done for your people. I want to be saved. And when, this, when the nation of Israel came in with Joshua, everybody was destroyed but Rahab. Why? Why? What did Rahab do? That's in the scriptures of Jesus. She protected the two Jews. So what does she get? She gets to go in with Jesus. And what more is that? If she saved, her name ends up in the genealogy of Jesus. A whore. It shows anybody can get saved. 